the book I chose was Johannes Lichtman's Such Good Work. At its heart, this book is about what all serious art is about. How should a person be? We have become suspicious of the stories we used to tell ourselves in answer to that question. We've become suspicious of the impulse to be good and to do good in the world and for good reason. We've become hyper aware of all the ways in which that impulse is self-flattering and error prone, the ways in which we are always already complicit in the systemic wrongs whose consequences we would address. We want to be righteous, we want to be pure, and we would rather maintain that purity in a state of perfectly innocent, perfectly inactive critique than give up a certain image of ourselves. Such Good Work is the recent novel I've read that feels most nearly adequate to these quandaries. The novel's protagonist is wounded, privileged, radically flawed, and desperate to justify his existence. He sacrifices his own self-image. Instead of being paralyzed by the imperfection of any action he can conceive, he does the best he can to address the suffering he can see. One feels that Johannes Lichtman loves his characters, even as he is hard on them and strips them of all their illusions. The book is exhilaratingly smart, always outpacing our expectations. It is also immensely, profoundly beautiful. I feel hugely honored to have been able to choose it for this prize. Thank you so much. Um, tonight's the first time I've had the privilege of meeting Garth Greenwell, but I'm such a fan of his work that I went to see him read last summer. Um, and that night he was the first of three readers, and he prefaced his reading by saying that he was going to read something that he had written with the intent to create something that's 100% high art and also 100% pornography. <laughs> I remember thinking, wow, that's really brave to read that aloud. I sure hope this goes well. <laughs> and then he read the most graphic sex scene I've ever heard or read uh, anywhere. But it was somehow also tender and sweet and sad and brutal and lovely and loving and so moving. And when he was done, he only read for like 10 minutes, but people were standing up and applauding. And there was a person across the aisle from me who was crying. And, the couple in front of me, for some reason, brought their kid who was like nine, <laughs> and, and the child was like, that was good. <laughs> and my friend who I was with that night said, do you realize someone has to follow him? <laughs> and that's what I've been thinking about all day. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Garth, for picking my book. It's just an amazing thing for you to do. Um, Thanks to my girlfriend, Sherry, for being here. It makes it so much more fun. Um, I'm going to read the first page of my novel. It's called Such Good Work. It'll be real short. My students turned in drawings of animals with extraordinary lifespans. I learned that there were species of two worm that lived for up to 170 years. Arctic whales more than 200 years old. Clams with a life expectancy of 400. Sponges that have been alive for more than a millennium. A kind of jellyfish, the immortal jellyfish, that after reaching sexual maturity could revert to infancy again and again, maybe forever. Really? I said, holding up Lucy's drawing. Lucy nodded proudly. She was a sophomore psych major. Her jellyfish wore a cape. A dialogue bubble above its head stated, I am immortal and a jellyfish. <laughs> I hung Lucy's picture on the whiteboard next to Robbie's arctic whale, which had a horn and a side profile smile. Ricky's tube worm was a bright red plume with the caption, The tube worm is a vagina-like creature that can grow to be up to six feet tall, a deep-sea invertebrate whose only predators are accidental ones, mainly large mammals trying to have sex with it. <laughs> Kayla's drawing was not a drawing, but rather a full page of double-spaced text explaining why there shouldn't be drawing assignments in a college creative writing class. <laughs> drawing animals is not creative writing any more than pottery is accounting. 
<laughs> she sat in the front row and glared at me. She was almost certainly the treasurer of a sorority. <laughs> I hung her essay next to all the animal pictures. Thank you so much.